I'm Juliet Stepech, Executive Director of Texas's Gulf Coast Workforce Board. I'm Mark Guthrie, Chair of Texas Gulf Coast Workforce Board. And this is Workforce, Workforce Solutions. Solutions. The Gulf Coast Workforce Board and its operating affiliate, Workforce Solutions, together are the public workforce system for the Houston-Galveston region. We help keep our region a great place to do business, work, and live by fulfilling the diverse needs of the businesses and individuals we serve. Spanning 13 counties with 28 local career offices, we are here to help our friends and neighbors navigate the greater Houston area's vibrant job market and build strong, meaningful careers. At Workforce Solutions, we are employer driven because we understand that jobs created by business help us connect people with opportunity. With our deep understanding of the local workforce and talent pool, we help businesses navigate the local market and build highly skilled teams. Hello, I'm Thomas Brown, a senior planner at the Gulf Coast Workforce Board. Many of the services we provide are included in our local workforce plan, which details how we invest in services, training, and education to ensure our region's businesses have the people with the skills and abilities required to fulfill today and tomorrow's workforce needs and propel our economy forward. The local workforce plan, or local plan, explains how the workforce solution system operates in the Gulf Coast region. The current local plan was developed in 2020, looking ahead to 2021 through 2024 and the needs of the workforce and businesses. Two years into each local plan, we modify the plan by analyzing and updating the local workforce data. This is where we are today. We have updated our 2021 through 2024 local plan and have made it available to you on our website at wrksolutions.com forward slash local plan. This update is significant because it reflects the changes our region experienced throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and the brisk recovery we enjoyed following the height of the pandemic and staggering job losses in 2020. The plan has been updated in three areas. First, we updated the current economic conditions. The data originally used in 2020 just started to account for the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and much has changed since then. Next, we updated the tools we use to target investments in services, education, and training, which includes our list of targeted industries, targeted occupations, and where the jobs are. These tools forecast the future growth and wage potential of jobs in various industries, as well as the level of training or education required. Lastly, the third area we updated is the board's current partnerships and initiatives. Hello, and thank you for joining us to learn more about the Gulf Coast Workforce Board local plan. My name is Parker Harvey, and I'm the principal economist for the board. And in this video, I'll be providing an overview of the long-term outlook for our local labor market that serves as a key part of the update to the local plan that takes place every two years. The update includes a review and an expansion of three lists of industries and occupations that reflect workforce investment priorities of the board, guide our day-to-day -day operations, and also serve as signaling tools to aid the public in identifying the best employment opportunities across the region now and in the future. Throughout the presentation, I'll refer to these three lists collectively as the target list. So let's dive right in. Let's begin with an overview of the three lists, starting with the targeted industries list, which consists of many of the largest, highest paying industries across the 13 county region. Next is the high skill, high growth occupations list made up of relatively large, fast growing occupations with above average wages that are important to our targeted industries and require post-secondary education and training. And finally, there's the where the jobs are list, which simply identifies the occupations with the largest number of employment opportunities, in other words, jobs, without regard for wages or growth. The local plan, per the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act, requires that workforce boards develop, update, and formally submit some variation of these lists every two years in order to demonstrate that they've undertaken an assessment of the future talent needs of employers. However, even if these lists were not a regulatory requirement, they would still remain a best practice for developing a data-driven framework for making strategic investments in the local workforce. On top of serving as a framework for making workforce investments, the targeted industry list functions on two levels, as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. First, as a signaling tool aimed at stakeholders ranging from students to parents to job seekers to independent school districts and career and technical education programs to post-secondary training providers as to where the best job opportunities are today and are likely to be in the future. Second, the list function as operational tools with the targeted industry list guiding the work of the Employer Service Division at the Gulf Coast Workforce Board by helping this part of the organization prioritize outreach efforts to employers. 
This is essential given a universe of more than 200 industries and nearly 145,000 unique companies across the region. The High Skill High Growth Occupations List provides a platform from which career office staff can have conversations with individuals about their career interests and goals, as well as what type of training might be appropriate, and whether the Gulf Coast Workforce Board can support those endeavors with financial aid. Lastly, the Where the Jobs Are list serves as a general information resource and less as an operational tool, but can still be useful to a wide range of stakeholders, helping them identify careers where the largest number of job opportunities can be found when obtaining immediate employment is the top priority. In order to develop and update these targeted lists, we need data. The source of that data is known as the employment projections. The projections are developed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics at the national level and then localized by the Texas Workforce Commission for the 28 workforce board areas in the state, including the Gulf Coast. They provide a long-term outlook for roughly 230 industries and 600 occupations in our region and are updated every two years. The current time frame the projections cover is 2020 to 2030. There are projections for industries, for example, residential building construction, that simply provide the 10-year outlook for job growth in both percentage and absolute terms. Separately, there are projections for occupations, for example, chemical engineers, that also include information on the typical amount of education needed to enter into that field, previous work experience and on-the-job training if needed, average wages, job openings, and more. Lastly, it should be noted that 10 years is a considerable amount of time in terms of potential changes in the economy. However, the projections do not attempt to account for future recessions. Nonetheless, the projections may reflect recent economic trends that were occurring at the time they were being developed, such as the shale boom and bust between 2012 and 2016 affecting the Gulf Coast region, the 2020 global pandemic, as well as longer-term changes in technology and demographic trends. So what do the latest projections say about job growth in the region between 2020 and 2030? Well, they say that employment should increase by 17.6% or roughly 560,000 jobs, which is an increase from roughly 3.2 million jobs total currently to about 3.7 million jobs over the 10-year period. Keep this percentage growth rate in mind as it will serve as one of the criteria for classifying an occupation as high skill, high growth later on. Until now, we've talked about the three target lists in the abstract. Now let's look at the list in practice starting with the targeted industries list and the qualifying criteria needed for industries to be included on it. Immediately thereafter, we'll look at the list itself with emphasis on newly added industries as these tend to be of greatest interest to stakeholders with familiarity with past versions of the list. In order to be considered for inclusion on in the currently proposed 2023 targeted industries list, an industry should ideally meet two criteria possess roughly 10,000 jobs or more, and average weekly wages are nearly $1,350 as of 2020. These thresholds are full-year averages across all four-digit NAICS level industries and constitute the primary criteria used to qualify industries. However, an industry that meets only one of these criteria and was on the previous targeted industries list remains eligible for inclusion. The secondary set of criteria is important as it increases list composition stability from one targeting cycle to the next. It's also important to note that previous targeted industry lists utilize functionally similar but distinct criteria which included absolute employment growth, percentage growth, and average weekly wages. However, due to data suppression, projections over the 2020-2030 timeframe were not available for multiple industries historically targeted by the Gulf Coast Workforce Board. To overcome this limitation, non-projection industry data published under the quarterly census of employment and wages was used as it is relatively more complete. As a result, the recommendation was made to discontinue targeting of industries based on projected growth, but instead based on verified employment size in the base year, in this case 2020, along with continuing to use industry wages. This avoids situations where the Gulf Coast Workforce Board must include industries with missing projection data, which could prove confusing to end users, or industries projected to be in decline, yet continue to be essential to the regional economy. Nonetheless, the revised targeted industry criteria for the proposed 2023 list resulted in a collection of 51 industries total, eight of which were new, meaning they were not found on the previous list approved in early 2021. And here is the targeted industry list itself, with the first 25 shown grouped by parent sector. Industries in orange represent new additions to the proposed 2023 list not found on the previous one. And here are the remaining 26 targeted industries. Overall, the new additions to the list tend to be a mixture of public utilities or similar industries in the case of electric power generation and telecommunications carriers, 
wholesalers of durable and non-durable goods related to the oil and gas industry, and lastly, financial and legal services. Having identified the collection of industries important to the regional economy, the next major step of the targeting process is to identify occupations important to those industries that are large enough to absorb new entrants into the workforce, are projected to grow over the next decade, pay above average wages, and require an investable amount of reasonably well-defined post-secondary education and training. In general, occupations meeting these criteria are deemed high-skill, high-growth. For many stakeholders, this list of occupations represents the most familiar expression of the Gulf Coast Workforce Board's priorities as they relate to development of the region's current and future workforce. Similar to the targeted industry list, there are various criteria for determining whether an occupation qualifies as high skill, high growth. Ideally, an occupation will exhibit the following. At least half of all jobs specific to that occupation can be found in one or more of the targeted industries previously identified, signifying the occupation's importance to said group of industries. An occupation should possess a minimum of roughly 1,800 jobs by the final year of the employment projections in 2030, and this ensures the occupation is large enough to absorb new entrants into the workforce, along with individuals relocating to the region and other potential sources of workers. An occupation should possess a projected growth rate of at least 17.6%, which, as noted towards the beginning of the presentation, is the average across all occupations between 2020 and 2030. An occupation should require a minimum of a high school diploma and moderate on-the-job training. However, note that three-quarters of the occupations on the proposed 2023 high school high growth list require at least a post-secondary non-degree award. Lastly, an occupation should pay a median wage of at least $21.32 an hour, or roughly $44,000 a year, thereby increasing the likelihood of a worker's financial self-sufficiency over time. Occupations meeting four out of five of these primary criteria and found on the previous high school high growth list are eligible to be retained. Unlike the targeted industry list, the qualifying criteria remain the same as during the previous targeting cycle, apart from updated thresholds reflecting the latest projections and wage data. In total, there are 147 occupations on the proposed 2023 high skill high growth occupation list, with 35 of these qualifying as new additions. Note that 26 of these 35 new occupations were added due to the inability to determine definitively whether 50% or more of their employment is located within our targeted industries due to data suppression. These occupations otherwise meet all other primary criteria, meaning they remain high quality choices in keeping with the overall intent and spirit of the high skill high growth list. Given the relatively large number of occupations on the high school high growth list at 147, the occupations shown here are only new additions to the proposed list. Note that the single largest group of additions belongs to management occupations. The Gulf Coast Workforce Board has traditionally not targeted these types of occupations. However, in recognition of the potential for upskilling of incumbent workers to reach higher skilled, higher wage managerial roles, the board is elected to include them going forward. Other newly added occupations represent a mixture of business and financial, computer and mathematical, architecture and engineering, sales and maintenance and repair, among others. On a final note, the proposed 2023 high school high growth occupation list represents the most diverse and comprehensive list to date and reflects the Gulf Coast Workforce Board's goal of expanding opportunity for the region's residents by extending the range of occupations targeted. And here are the remaining new occupations to the 2023 proposed high skill high growth occupation list. The third and final result of the targeting process is the where the jobs are list. As mentioned earlier, this list lacks the operational implications of the targeted industries and high skill high growth occupations list. However, it provides useful information for job seekers in search of immediate employment opportunities, regardless of wages or future growth, given that many of the occupations on the list are among the largest in terms of total jobs. Here, an excerpt of the Where the Jobs Are list can be seen showing only the top 10 largest occupations sorted by employment in descending order. Note that the sole criterion for inclusion on the list is simply whether an occupation has 667 or more job openings each year between 2020 and 2030. That figure is the average number of job openings across the universe of roughly 600 occupations published under the current projections. A quick glance at the excerpt shown reveals some of the largest and best known occupations in any labor market, including food service, retail, and clerical roles. While many of the occupations on this list require relatively little formal post-secondary education training, if any at all, note that among the top 10 shown here, three are high school high growth, 
registered nurses, general and operations managers, and heavy tractor trailer truck drivers. These examples help illustrate that while many large occupations are relatively low wage and require relatively little skill formally, there are notable exceptions providing opportunities of the kind emphasized by the Gulf Coast Workforce Board through its high skill, high growth occupation list. Before concluding, it's worth noting that various technical challenges were encountered during the process of updating the proposed 2023 target list that stakeholders should be aware of. First, projecting out 10 years from 2020, the year with the sharpest one-month decline in employment on record, had the potential to exaggerate growth rates for some industries and occupations, given that the base was arguably artificially low due to the pandemic. Stakeholders should be aware that even if such unusually high growth rates are ultimately proven correct in 10 years' time, much of that growth has likely already occurred during the early rebound phase of the pandemic, resulting in only incremental growth over the remaining years. Second, the standard occupation classification system used to categorize occupations has undergone significant revisions since the publication of the previous high school high growth list. The update from the 2010 vintage of the SOC system to the 2018 vintage resulted in the loss of some previous SOC codes and occupations, complicating analysis in many cases. While this challenge was successfully overcome during the current targeting cycle, stakeholders may find that other data sources continue to use codes that officially have been discontinued. As a result, a supplemental resource containing 2023 high skill high growth occupations and their antecedents will be made available upon Workforce Board approval of the proposed list. Lastly, as already mentioned, data suppression to prevent the identification of employers limited the usefulness of the employment projections in some cases, requiring workarounds such as the switch to the quarterly census of employment and wages. Again, this strategy was necessary to prevent the loss of long-standing targeted industries from the list simply due to a lack of data. We hope you enjoyed this look at the Gulf Coast Workforce Board's 2023 targeted industries, high school high growth occupations, and where the jobs are list, and their role in providing an update to the local plan. If you're viewing this at your leisure prior to the public comment meeting scheduled for January 19th, please bring your questions and comments as we welcome your input on this important part of our organization's efforts to make the Gulf Coast region the best place to live, work, and do business. Thank you. The Gulf Coast Workforce Board and Workforce Solutions is currently seeking your comments on the updates made to our 2021 to 2024 local workforce plan. The public comment period for the local plan update is January 2nd through the 31st, 2023. We invite you to review the updated plan available at wrksolutions.com forward slash local plan or attend our public meeting on January the 19th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. at Workforce Solutions Northline. We rely on input from people like you to help us keep our region a great place to live, work, and do business. Please take time to review our plan and submit your comments, and be sure to include any priorities or concerns you'd like us to know. We have five ways you can provide your comments which will be added to an appendix of the plan that is ultimately submitted to the Texas Workforce Commission. Again, visit us at wrksolutions.com forward slash local plan where you can review the plan and learn how you can submit your comments by January 31st. At the Gulf Coast Workforce Board and Workforce Solutions, we imagine possibilities and envision a vibrant future for our region and all within it.